Greg Stocks here for Utah Desert Remote Observatories. There's been a lot of, maybe not a lot, but some conversation lately about my uh, natural SHO or um, Hubble palette rendering. And I thought I would do just a quick video to show how I do that. And if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I use kind of a, a hybrid workflow where I do the initial work in PixInsight as far as the calibration and integration of the um, various sub-exposures. And that leaves me typically with a set of monochrome uh, sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen uh, monochrome images, as well as I may have some RGB data of the stars. So that would be one RGB image of the stars by themselves. And I use a, you know, a combination of the Russell Croman's plugins such as Blur Exterminator and Star Exterminator and Noise Exterminator. Uh, star Exterminator is how I extract the stars from the RGB composite image. So I want to just quickly step through and I'm going to use this image as the example. This is the center of the Rosette Nebula rendered in the natural SHO color palette. And I call it natural because it avoids uh, having all of the green color that you typically get with an SHO color palette. And then you wind up having to do a lot of work to, to eliminate the green. So I thought I would just step through my process. And I'm going to assume that you've looked at some of my other videos where I explain how I go through the PixInsight workflow. Uh, when I start in Photoshop, and I'm going to jump over to where I have the four files loaded as layers. And to get these loaded as layers, what you do is go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack, and that'll give you a dialog box where you can choose what files you want to load. And so this is the hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur monochrome images, as well as the RGB for the stars. And since these were extracted, they're just on a, a solid black background. And of course, in Photoshop, I can use the eyeball here on the left of the layer palette to turn individual layers on and off. So for instance, here at the bottom, we have the sulfur. And so that's sulfur rendered in monochrome. Here's the oxygen. Here's the hydrogen. And then lastly is the stars. And typically what I'll do is put each one of these into its own group. And then I'll work on the group that contains that layer. So first we'll put the stars into its own group. And since you do groups a lot, the easy way to do that is just to use the keyboard shortcut of Control G. So, or that would be Command G if you're on a Mac. So Control G. Now I have a group for the stars. I can double click the name and change that from group one to stars. And then I want to put this in screen blending mode. And the reason we use screen is because in Star Exterminator, I chose the unscreen option for the stars. So screen puts them back to basically the way they came out. And I can close this group with a little triangle here. And then I'll just turn this off for now. And basically, I'll do the same thing with each one of the other groups. So Control G, this is the hydrogen. And then I'll just turn that off. Control G. This is the oxygen. So double click on the group. And then lastly at the bottom, Control G and sulfur. And I have these in this order for a particular reason, as I want to start by building an SOO image. In other words, sulfur will be red, and then oxygen will be green and blue. And there's a real easy way to do that. And again, if you've watched my videos, you already know this technique. Uh, let's double check and make sure that if we look at image mode, we can see this is, in fact, an RGB color image. Uh, if you've just loaded the monochrome images, then it will come in by default as a grayscale. And you correct that just by clicking on RGB color. It may ask if you want to merge all the layers, and you do not want to merge them. So you would select no, don't merge. So now that we know this is a, an RGB color image, I can double click here to the right of the word oxygen on the group level. And what you'll see in the dialog box, if we look here in the center, you can see that there's a checkbox for what channels are going to be turned on for this layer. So there's red, green, and blue. 
we want oxygen to be just green and blue, so all we have to do is turn off the red layer and watch what happens when I uncheck this checkbox. We now have an SOO image. Click OK and that'll close the dialog box. Typically we would want to, to maybe do some simple levels adjustments, so I'm going to turn off the oxygen to start with. Let's come down to the sulfur and I'm just going to click on the add adjustment layer for a levels adjustment layer <clears throat> and by default it will add it on top of whatever is the currently selected layer and I'll, I'll basically just do two things here. I'll darken the, the blacks a little bit by moving the slider on the left hand side of the histogram and then I'll bring the lights slider up and you can see how the histogram tails off and then it comes out to about this area and then it stops. And we want to move the white slider to just, just shy of where it would start clipping the whites. And we want to be careful also that we don't clip any of the blacks. That gives us a nice contrast. If we need to change the overall brightness, we can move the, the midpoint slider. So that's the sulfur. Now let's go to the oxygen and we'll do the same thing. I'll add a levels adjustment and we'll darken the blacks a little bit, brighten the highlights, and then the midpoint slider will play with how prominent we want the oxygen to be. And let's say we've decided something like that looks good. So now it's time to add the hydrogen and we're going to do two things with the hydrogen. First, let's look at the overall brightness and we can see that's pretty bright and I don't spend a lot of time trying to perfect this in PixInsight. I just want to make sure I've got all of the tones visible because I know I'm going to adjust it in Photoshop. So we'll click on the levels adjustment, darken the darks, brighten the, the brights, and probably somewhere in there is going to look pretty good. <clears throat> Now we'll click on the group level because what we want to do now is affect the entire group. And again, I'll double click on this. And this is where we really introduce the color of the hydrogen and what differentiates this from a standard SHO. If this were a standard SHO color palette, I would turn off red and blue. <clears throat> and that would be kind of a pure straight SHO color palette. But you can see that you get a lot of green when you do it that way. So what I'm going to do is include red as well as green. So now we've got both red and green clicked. And rather than pass through on the mode, I'm going to choose either lighten or screen. And it will, it will vary with the individual uh, files, but let's start with lighten. That's the least aggressive of the two. Click OK. And now I'll come back to the levels adjustment. And you'll see as we adjust this, it will change the amount of hydrogen and also the, you know, the intensity of the hydrogen as it comes through. The last thing we'll do is fine tune the color here. So for that, I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer, and that's sitting right on top of the levels. So I'm using levels to adjust the overall brightness, and I'm going to use curves to change how much green we let in here. So the, the less green I include, the less, the less yellow and the more red-orange the hydrogen becomes. And at this point, it looks like I the blue is probably a little bit too prominent, so I'll come back to the oxygen and maybe I'll turn it up or down a little bit to, to fine-tune the amount of oxygen that's coming through. <clears throat> and that's basically the process. If I want to adjust the reds, I'll come back to the sulfur. And this adjusts the amount of red that's going to show. Oxygen adjusts the amount of blue and green. And then the hydrogen amount adjusts this level overall. And the curves lets me adjust the amount of, of green in the... Or just click on the channel you want to edit, and then you can 
adjust that. Once you've got it, the basic adjustments done, you can include some global adjustments. To do that, <clears throat> we want all, our, all of our global adjustments to set on top of everything else. And when you add an adjustment layer, if I have selected a group, this will probably throw you off a little bit. If I am currently on a group, and let's say I add a color balance adjustment layer, by default it will add it inside the group, and that's not what I want. I actually want it on top of the group so it affects everything below it. So to make sure it does that, I'm going to first close this group. Now when I click on the color balance, it will add it on top of that group. If this group had been open like this, it would have added it inside, and then it would, would not have the effect we want. But now since it's on top of all of these underlying layers, I can do global adjustments and adjust the color balance overall. I can also add a, for instance, a Q saturation and fine tune individual colors. And at this point, it just becomes a matter of, of taste and practice and deciding what you want it to look like and then targeting the appropriate uh, narrow band layer that would affect, for instance, if I want to affect the reds, I would go to the sulfur. If I want to affect the greens and blues, I would go to the oxygen. If I want to really fine tune the oxygen, I can add a curves adjustment layer. And for instance, we could pull some of the green out of the oxygen to make it more blue or less blue. So the beauty of this approach is there's just lots of flexibility and the adjustments, once you get used to where you need to, to go in order to make the adjustment, the adjustments are visual rather than numerical. And then the last thing you might do is turn the stars back on. And after you're done playing with it, you can wind up with something that looks like this or you know whatever whatever color combination or color palette uh, suits your vision so that's the basics of how i do the sho color palette in a natural and the the real trick to it is in how you add hydrogen uh, we here we chose to add it in light and blending mode you can also add it in screen blending mode which is a little bit more aggressive. And generally, if you use screen blending mode, you'll find you need to turn down the brightness a little bit to keep it from being overwhelming. Uh, but it depends on the images you start with and what your vision is for the, uh, the finished image. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments. And I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you did, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to visit our website at utahdesertremote.com. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about hosting your telescope under our skies in southwest Utah. And with that, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks.